Hey guys, Dr. Christy Ennis. Today we are going to go over how you get rid of this blech, awful, tight, miserable feeling that you get in your calf, right? It's right here. We're right here. Not here so much. Not here, but right here. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you've ever experienced this hiking, running, playing soccer, even walking, it just kind of grabs you, right? So today we're going to go start to finish how to get it better, how to get it to not come back. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is how bad is it? So we actually grade muscle strains. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it kind of sounds like the space balls beginning of the code on the luggage. Um, but grade one to two, usually more towards the one end, is you get that little, it's almost like a cramp or a tightness, but you can go about your day without any issue. Maybe if you poke at it a little, it's a little sore. Grade two or grade two to three, it's definitely a little bit worse, right? So you can walk normally, but there's no way you could go for a run. And if you poke at it, yeah, it's going to be really sore, OK? Grade three and four are definitely on the more serious end. And because of this, tend to actually, unfortunately, need more rest than the grades one and two. That's where actually walking can become a problem. Sometimes people even need to use crutches. And that takes a good at least eight to 12 weeks, I know, I'm sorry, to heal as opposed to those first two, which can take anywhere from three to six weeks, OK? So that's important to know. Now, the other thing that's important to know is when you first do this thing, there's an inflammatory process happening. And you actually kind of want to let that happen. So I caution people on taking something like Advil or ibuprofen so that you don't disrupt that natural process. Now, let's say it's been a couple days, usually two to three, sometimes as much as five. It's starting to feel a little bit better. I'll back up a little. Sometimes when it's bad for me in the beginning, I'll actually wear some compression socks. And oh, it just is like, wow, a little slice of heaven for those legs, OK? So that's something you can do as well as getting some range of motion. There's debate about ice. If ice feels really good for you, go ahead and do so. But after it's been a couple days, it might still be tender, but it's definitely better. You're walking a little bit more normal. You don't want to stretch, OK? Here's what not to do, because you'll pull those fibers that are now starting to heal. And that will just re-cause and re-cause an injury. So we don't want to stretch yet. We do want to do get a little bit more blood flow going in there. So we're going to use the derma edge. And again, most times the calf injury happens more on the inside and more in the middle. Clearly, it can happen anywhere. So you know, pay attention to where it hurts on you. But we want to get a little bit of gentle blood flow going. So I'm going to pull out my derma edge here, which is what I created and my family helps me make, um, and is available on my website. So what you want to do is just try to get, and you can almost see that it's a little bumpy on me. I have tight calves. So we're just trying to get some blood flow going through there, getting things to glide a little bit, because things start to do this as that muscle starts to try to repair itself. It's a little bit weaker, and it's a little bit haphazard and meshy. And so we want to try to get that to move the way it's supposed to do. Right? So I'll even sometimes start this on the first day or two. Yes, I have strained my calves a couple times. I need to work on the other stuff I'm telling you. Um, and then you may need to wait a day or two before it feels comfortable. But I'm pushing very, very gently, and a lot of times this helps. So when you're able to go a little bit deeper, right, you can press a little bit more firmly. But then you actually want to get into that spot where it feels, ooh, and my, this is where I tend to be tight here. You're actually doing, I find with the fingers can be a little bit uncomfortable. So I tend to use the edge of my derma edge. You're going across the calf, not up and down, but across. This is where that scar tissue is starting to form. And again, not great blood flow in that scar tissue. So sometimes that can re-tear if you're not trying to address that. And that can be another reason to re-strain the calf. So you want to make sure that this is not ridiculously painful, OK? It should take about 30 seconds or so before you start to go, OK, yeah, that feels a little better. And then it can take 60 to 90 before you're like, oh, what am I? Oh, yeah, I'm not, I didn't realize I was still doing anything. If you start to do this and after a few seconds it gets worse, it's not ready for it, OK? So just wait a little bit longer. You can do this in whatever position is comfortable for you. Just try to not have that calf muscle activated. You really want to keep it nice and loose so that you can truly get in there. Once a day is probably plenty for that as well, OK? So blood flow first, and then you're going to get in there and get a little bit deeper. You can use your fingers, but like I said, I find that pretty uncomfortable on my hand after a while, certainly. 
Now, the other thing, this amazing, awesome lotion is actually made by a local person, um, a pickle jar apothecary. And I'll be honest with you that I use this hands down more than anything. Sometimes I'll even just put it on and not do anything else. And I actually just use this on my son. And he's like, oh my gosh, I can move my shoulder better. I know that sounds kind of like an infomercial, but I swear this stuff works. I'm going to link this in the description so you guys know where to get it, because she does sell it online. Um, and I'll use that with my Derma Edge too to make things glide a little bit better. All right. So once we've got our little blood flow going, things are feeling a little bit better, we want to start on strengthening. Remember what I said, this tends to be a little bit weaker. So if you, even if you're feeling good and you immediately go back to the sport or activity that you were doing when you had this issue, odds are you're going to re-tear it. So if you don't work on the scar tissue, you don't work on the strength, you're going to have problems. Now, I'm going to scooch my buns over here. If it's really painful, and, or excuse me, really weak, and you just cannot do much with it, I'll start people off with an isometric contraction. So you'll go to the wall, and it's like you're going to push your toes and lift your heel, right? That's the motion, or that's the action. But you're not actually going to lift your heel. You're just going to press down in those toes so that you're activating these muscles, and you're holding five or 10 seconds. Again, this is only if you really have a lot of weakness and you're not able to do the other ones that I show you. So at least you can do something to start getting that going. So even holding up to five seconds or so, 10 repetitions a couple times a day. From there, I'm gonna stand on up. We're gonna start with just a basic calf raise. So both feet, because again, the one that's injured might still be a little weak. You may even need to hang on a little bit, okay? We're going to go up and down, just like I'm showing you. Again, about 10 to 15 reps. Once that's OK, then you're going to focus on the slow lowering. That does what we call eccentric work. And that's where the tendon tends to be the weakest, and it needs the muscle, excuse me, the muscle needs the most strength. All right, so just a regular heel raise. Then we're going to go up and slowly lower. You can see I'm a little shaky. And then you'll go up on both. Pick the non-injured leg up and slowly lower on the other one, right? So up, slowly lower. The goal, again, 10 to 15 reps. This one is a couple times a day, only when the other ones are comfortable. Goal is to be able to do this, and I don't know if I can without holding down. I got a lot of ankle and foot stuff going on. So up, and then balance, slowly lower, about four or five seconds from there, OK? From there, a little bit harder, and I'll show you with the leg I've been showing you, is a single leg deadlift. Now we're getting into a harder eccentric exercise. So you're swing, swinging, geez, no, you are hinging from that hip. So I'm not lifting this other leg. This leg that's on the ground, the whole back side of it is the leg that's doing the work. Okay, I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see me a little bit here. So I'm shifting back onto my heel. It's like the little drinking bird. <laughs> and again, obviously, you can do this without holding on to if you are able. All right, so there's some good strengthening exercises. From then, you'll actually get into a little bit of higher level plyometric jumpy things if that's what your sport was. Okay? This is a good start, though, for sure, because this can take a little while to get through. Lastly, and what people don't often think of, is that you can get what we call neural tension. And that is, generally, if we're talking about calf muscle, the sciatic nerve starting from the back and coming down. So when you've had an injury, or if you've injured it more than once, sometimes you change your walking, other things start to get tight, and that darn little nerve gets trapped somewhere along that path. So to test that out, you may not have as awesome of a chair as I do, but you want to have a chair that you can sit in comfortably. You're going to bring your chin down toward your chest and let yourself slump forward a little. From here, you're going to lift that leg up. And your leg may only get to here, right? You go, whoa, that's tight. If it is and you lift your head up and it's better, you definitely know there's nerve issue. The other way to look at that is, right, if I can get all the way up, but then I bring my toes up and I'm like, whoa, but I lift my head and it's better. Again, nerve tension, OK? And so to treat that or to work on that, we actually do what we call nerve glides. So it's that same little position, again, extending as much as you can. And then when I sit up, I'm lifting my head all the way up. You may have to start without doing much of a motion, and that's OK. So my legs are shaky after all that exercise. And again, 10 reps or so, you're not holding this because we don't want to stretch a nerve. We only want to glide it. That's very important to know that, OK? You're not holding this, or you may even cause more tension in there. 
So there you have it, a big plethora woo, of exercises and techniques for you to get better and stay better.